Guys, we knew it was coming, better late than never, but the behemoth that is Apple has now entered the AI game. And it was kind of odd because Tim Cook was spotted with Google founders and Google execs, and I, I think there was some sort of assumption there was going to be some sort of agreement to leverage Google Gemini in their system, you know, Siri leveraging it. And then they come out and they start publishing these amazing white papers that I'll go into. And it's Apple's new AI. And there's, okay, Mashable, you're just going to, all right, continue the site. Uh, Apple's new AI, three ways Siri could beat chat GPT. I actually haven't read this article. I'm just using it as a preface to go into the more boring looking white papers. Now, Realm, known as Reference Resolution as Language Modeling, and don't worry, I'll quickly give a brief overview of what that is, is actually here it says, in the abstract of the white paper, um, and I actually, I love that Apple is putting these white papers out. They say in this other paper that they had previously published called MM1 Methods Analysis and Insights from Multimodal LLM Pre-Training, that's a mouthful, uh, that there's two aspects, there's the closed and there's open with these LLMs and they wanna be community-based, so they're gonna be open and they publish these amazing white papers that you can dig into and I'll put links in the description too. So the interesting thing about what they're calling Realm, which both of these are going to drive what I assume is going to be a very beefed up and huge upgrade of Siri. They state, we also benchmark against GPT 3.5 and GPT 4. I think there's an assumption that as far as state of the art, those are um, it. With, uh, as far as like the creme de la creme right now, with our smallest model achieving performance comparable to that of chat GPT 4 and our larger model substantially outperforming it. Now, from what I've read, it's it's within a narrow scope of what's called reference context. And again, we'll talk about that, but I wanna start with this multimodal LLM. So large language models are trained on usually a bunch of text base, and that's what GPT is trained on. And it just aggregates and trains. So let's take a step back. AI models use statistics and probability in the simplest terms to generate outputs, these generative AI models. And what they need to do is to change whatever data, whether it's images or text, into numbers that they can operate on. And then there's relations that are made, and that's how you get like an output of a sentence that makes sense. So depending on your inputs, and that's why prompt engineering is an interesting thing, because you can kind of manipulate and get the model to give you the proper outputs because they're trying to understand what your specific prompt is in either the tone, the construction of the sentence to deliver you the best response possible. And there's the relationship ma mapping. So people nowadays are finding that, you know, GPT is more within the realm of how they speak, how they operate, the output, or I personally like Grok, which is uh, on x.com. And then, of course, there's Google Gemini that I sometimes use. And each of these models kind of do something better than the other. Now, what's different is this, there's LLMs, large language models, is this multimodal pre-trained model. As I said before, GPTs largely train on text. The multimodal, the multi-aspect of this, is this image. And I believe even here it is. Uh, for example, we demonstrate that for large-scale multimodal pre-training using a careful mix of image caption, interleaved image text, and text-only data is crucial for achieving state-of-the-art. Um, ah, yeah, they actually use that term. That's that's to me. I, I consider state-of-the-art more of like a patent term. You want to understand what is the current in the United States. You hear about state of the union. The president's going to come on. They're going to give the address. They're going to talk about the current state of the union in any sort of art or kind of technology, they call it the state of the art. So anything that is state of the art is going to be at the top and you compare everything against that. So in the generative AI context, everyone's typically comparing everything to GPT-4 because that's been performing the best in a number of aspects. Um, so uh, by scaling up the presented recipe, we build the MM1, a family of multimodal models, including both dense variants up to 30B, and mixture of experts, uh, variants of 64B, um, that are state-of-the-art in pre-training metrics and achieve competitive performance after supervised fine-tuning and yada. So that's the differentiation right here. And that leads to this, which is Realm. 
Reference resolution is language modeling, the ability to understand more about context. So for Siri to leverage this and you asking questions and you have your phone out and you're looking at something, it, they want Siri to not only understand what you're saying and what response you want, but perhaps you're talking about something on screen. So that is the reference that they're talking about and that this model, this realm model is performing better than GPT 3.5 and GPT 4, which makes sense because I'm sure the Apple engineers that had this in mind that they needed. So they created a very specific model for this. So they've got the MM1, which again is multimodal versus text-based, which is what GPT is. And then they have reference resolution as language modeling, which talks about the fact that it is better. Um, let's see here. Uh, reference, reference resolution is an important problem, one that is essential to understand and successfully handle context of different kinds. This context includes both previous turns and context that pertains to non-conversational entities, such as entities on the user's screen, which is what I talked about, or those running in the background. So even if an application is not up and you're referencing it, it needs the LLM to understand that. So while LLMs have been shown to be extremely powerful for a variety of tasks, their use in reference resolution, particularly for non-conversational entities, remains underutilized. This paper demonstrates how LLMs can be used to create an extremely effective system to resolve references of various types by showing how reference resolution can be converted into a large language modeling problem, despite involving forms of entities like those on screen that are not traditionally conducive to being reduced to a text-only modality. Get it's both of these together that is going to be that secret sauce and that differentiation that Apple's saying that they're going to release and it's going to create this just, I guess, monster of Siri. But there's other aspects of this realm that's going to be used. They talk about robotics, the ability for the LLMs to leverage kind of the computer vision and understand everything in terms of data and just give more information up to date, real time you know, what's in front of a robot versus what's on your screen. It's incredibly fascinating. I, I personally, you know, Apple's been very silent. Um, you know, I operate, I'm a big Mac user. I've got a MacBook Pro personally. I've got my iPads right here. But what I'm curious about is running these models. Like I can't build my own model locally on my machine because I don't have the computational power within a GPU to do that. So if these models are going to be running faster and faster, and we do know like with the, with the Apple Silicon Silicon that it does run a lot of inference faster on the client side. That was a big thing that was with their last year's uh, WWDC. So I'm, I'm curious, are they going to beef up some sort of more discrete GPU that then I'll be able to program locally on my machine because that's an important aspect if you're learning how to develop these models or is there still some aspects because i personally don't know of them running you know nvidia h100s or b100s that were just recently released uh just to run these computations on a server elsewhere the other thing i'd be interested about is computations take a lot of power and that in turn takes money. So everything that has like some sort of AI built into it or autopilot, people know that drive a Tesla is that you have to pay for that computational power. You know, there are cloud models that people have. You, you can't run something this massive with this amount of user base in a cloud model because it's going to eat your AWS credits. If, if, any, if you have experience with that, I accidentally did that personally where I ran models and it just all my free credits just disappeared on me because I was just trying to run these massive models. Um, so I, I'm, I'm curious if there's going to be some sort of subscription based thing that's going to be coming out because of that. But yeah, I, I didn't expect this from Apple. It's really cool to read through the white papers. Again, I'll put them in the link in the description.